Hi, this is Melissa. Um, I'm an MD PhD student and we're switching things up a little bit for this video and we'll be talking about the autobiographical sketch for your OMSAS application. So this is basically one piece of the application when you apply to Ontario medical schools. Before I start, special thanks and disclosures. Um, as always, this video is with the community of support. Also, thank you to Danny, a medical student from Queen's University, who um, was able to review the PowerPoint and provided a lot of helpful suggestions. For um, myself, I have some personal disclosures in that I have not evaluated any medical school applications for the purposes of admissions, nor have I sat on any admissions panel. So that's to say that whatever I discuss in these series of videos isn't like a deep, dark secret of how to get into medical school. Really, the content is just my perspective, some gut intuition that I've developed having been in medicine for a little while. And like any video um, providing advice, be sure to check out other opinions to get a really broad and balanced perspective on how to go about doing your application. Uh, this is kind of just like a stepping stone. Also a reminder um, to please, please check the current application cycle instructions when you're applying to medicine. So I'm recording this video prior to the um, updated guidelines for the upcoming medical school application cycle. Um, I will say that for the most part, things are fairly stable, but you never know, things can change year to year. Um, so just be mindful of that, um, you know, and, and take things with a grain of salt and be sure to double check. I will also say just for the format of this presentation, um, the slides are going to be a little text heavy. It's because um, if you would rather just read and you don't want to listen to a disembodied voice talking to you, you can just mute the video and skim through the presentation and you'll get all the content you need just reading off the slides. Um, in contrast, if you would like to listen to me talk, um, I'll really be talking around the points. I might provide some personal anecdotes um, and just expand on some things a little bit, but I really did try to keep all the relevant information in text format. Okay, so for part one, we're going to do a general overview and tips of the ABS and the OMSAS application. This will be particularly useful if you have um, never applied to medicine before in Ontario and um, have no idea what an OMSAS app is, have no idea what an ABS is. I will also say though that, I mean, I catered this presentation to the ABS using the OMSAS app just because you get a little bit more bang for your buck. Um, you're talking about one concept can apply to several schools um, rather than, you know, focus the presentation on individual medical schools throughout Canada. But some of the tips could likely be applied to other medical school applications. There will be some differences though in terms of, um, you know, character limits, categories of things, the, you know, total number of items you can include, things like that. But some of the general principles are probably going to be fine. Okay, so what is OMSAS? Um, and basically, it's a centralized application center for Ontario medical schools through the Ontario University's application center. You may be familiar with the Ontario University's Application Centre if you've applied to universities in Ontario in the past. So for OMSAS, what it is, is that it's a system where you'll input some general identifying information, um, program selection, coursework and grades, references, MCAT information, the ABS, essays, and likely some other things that I'm missing here. So our focus is on the ABS. And when you use OMSAS, you're basically um, able to apply to all of the Ontario medical schools, um, and that includes McMaster, Nausum, Queens, U Ottawa, U of T, and Western. And in terms of which ones use the ABS, it's basically all of them except for Mac or McMaster. Um, and you know, so so again, something like the ABS is worthwhile to think about because it could likely be uh, relevant for whatever medical school you're applying to. The only thing I will say about ABS and Western though, is Western University, you know, compared to my experience, changed their application requirements over the past couple of years. So um, in terms of how they use the ABS, I'll admit that I'm not 100% clear if they're even going to read the actual ABS or if they're just going to read essays based on the ABS. Um, but regardless, it sounds like you still need to do the ABS to apply for Western. 
So here's what the website looks like if you've never seen it. Um, this screenshot was taken when the deadline's already passed, so I can't really, you know, dig around and, and look at new guidelines or anything like that. Um, the link to the website's also down below on the slide. And um, usually the new requirements will be updated f in early July for the upcoming cycle. So just keep an eye out for that and see if there's any changes that happen. And on that note, again, always, always check new requirements. So ABS categories. Um, basically, I treat it like if you have a CV and you have entries of your CV, the ABS is similar to that. And they break it down into different categories like employment, volunteer activities, extracurricular activities, awards and accomplishments, research, and other. I will say with the other, historically, it gives you the least amount of space. So I would personally use it very, very sparingly. Um, if you can have any activity, for example, count under extracurricular, I would rather just kind of do that instead of using other, just because you want to be able to write more about each activity that you do. And then a note here is that um, if you apply to UOttawa, you often need to identify the top three activities in each category to a maximum of 18. Um, and you're going to basically pick these um, with the intention that they best show that you're ready for medicine. And usually when you pick these, um, these are going to be long-term activities or at least meaningful experiences that you were very active in. Um, also, as a whole, you want to make sure that you pick diverse experiences um, because that diversity will highlight ver various qualities that you possess. And we're going to really hone in on this theme of like variety and diversity throughout these videos um, because that's so, so important for your medical school app. Just an additional note with the ABS, I will say that um, it can be very annoying to do and, and write, but Admittedly, it's probably one of my favorite parts of the medical school application because it is so forgiving. So we know that for medical school, you often need a high GPA, you need um, a certain MCAT score, and those things kind of like when it's done, it's done. Or if, you're not hap if you don't happen to be a good test taker, then you're not a great test taker, and it's painful to have to keep rewriting and rewriting it. Um, but the thing I like about the ABS is that you can always grow in the ABS. So if you feel like you're a little weak on activities, you can always do more activities if you can. Or maybe you have all the activities that you need, but you just need to optimize how you write about them and you can work on that. So I find it very forgiving in that you can always work on it no matter what stage you are in your life. So what I've done here is I broke down the um, different categories of the ABS into sections that you would be expected to write about. So black is the really standard stuff, like date that you did the activity, um, city that you did the activity, verifier is basically someone who can confirm that you did the activity, what year in your education did you do this activity, the amount of hours you did, and whether you did it in the summer academic year or, you know, some other details depending on the different type of, of ABS ca uh, category you're talking about. I highlighted the red sections because in my opinion, these are the sections you might spend a bit more time on. Um, description being kind of like that one-liner title or descriptor that summarizes what you're gonna talk about, right? And you don't get a lot of space. You probably get something close to like 50 characters, but I feel like you can, you know, spend some time on it just because you might adjust wording here and there to really optimize your description. And then the real meaty part is, you know, here responsibilities or type of activity or level of, of competition, qualifications, my role, because you'll get the most character space and it's very, very tight still, but it really is the most. And um, you'll likely spend time kind of adjusting your descriptions, really maximizing the impact of each description. Um, so it can be a lot. So a good note here is that it can be tedious to go through this in detail you know, between thinking back to when you did each activity, finding someone who can vouch for you, contacting them, um, you know, thinking back to how many hours you did, writing the description and all that. But it's really worthwhile to put in an earnest effort into all this. Um, just because the idea with medical school apps is if you don't put in the effort, other people will. And that's your competition. So you really just want to put your best self forward and on paper. And to do so, you're going to have to put a lot of effort into the ABS. So what do you include in the ABS? Well, you're going to include anything that falls under those categories that I mentioned. 
from the age of 16 and up. And my suggestion for when you start the ABS is rather than just jump straight into it, have a CV and then use your CV as a framework. So actually what I suggest is have a master copy CV. And this is a good tip for academia. And basically the master copy has all of your experiences, the big stuff, the small stuff, even if it was a one-time stint or a two-hour thing, you still put it in there. Because the idea is that's your master copy. And then whenever you apply to jobs or programs, you then just duplicate that, but then you start to remove the irrelevant things that you don't think would be worthwhile to include for an application. So at least you always have a document that has everything, and then you just kind of adjust based on what you need to use your CV for. And I like using a CV for the ABS because it helps ensure that you capture all your experiences. Otherwise, if you're just trying to fill in the ABS on the fly, it's so easy to miss something um, that could help your app. Also, just a note on CV is that you should periodically try to update it throughout the year. We always say this in academia and no one ever follows it, <laughs> um, but it, it does help because otherwise you're kind of on crunch time trying to update things last minute otherwise if you don't update it periodically. And then another important thing to think about is that the ball is in your court to decide what activities belong under each category. Um, so for my personal experiences, the line between volunteer and extracurricular can be a little blurry, especially if you're not in any organized sport or like art group. So for me, for example, if I held an administrative role, but it was for a student volunteer group, I still put it under extracurricular because I emphasize the admin role aspect. But if I provided a concrete service for something and volunteered my time for that, then I would lean towards volunteer. And then an obvious note is that whenever you talk about extracurriculars, um, just avoid the word volunteer as well, just to make sure that you don't kind of contradict yourself there. Also, the reason why I bring up, you know, uh, thinking thoroughly about how you want to categorize your experiences is that you always want to maximize variety. So at the end of the day, you're aiming for a few entries per category. So on that note, um, you can actually split up activities within reason. Um, I'm a kind of a, I'm into research, that's my personal bias, and um, it may be common that, you know, people have summer research jobs, and if it was a paid position, that's an employment entry already, because you made some income. If you had a productive summer, and you have a presentation or um, a paper from that research project, that's now a research item. If you won a scholarship for that paid research, that's now an awards entry. So you're talking about one term and one experience actually can be split off into three different entries. Um, on the same note on research, if you did not do um, a research project for course credit and you weren't paid for it, you might be able to count that as like a volunteer research experience. Um, and again, provided your verifier is okay with that. Um, on the volunteer note, if you had a volunteer position and you excelled in that position and you won an award, that's now two entries, one award, one volunteer. And then the really common one too is that you could be involved in a single organization, but then have held several roles in that organization, senior leadership versus some junior roles. And if those responsibilities in those different roles were very different, then you can possibly split up um, those experiences into different entries. However, there's also a flip side to this. So you may also decide to combine activities to reduce redundancy in your app, or at least limit the number of activities um, that you have to meet the maximum requirement. So I will admit this part probably has fluctuated a little bit over the years when I applied. I feel like there wasn't a, a very strict um, cap on how many items I could put in the ABS. Um, but now I think it's probably closer to 30 something entries is what you're limited to. But again, that's why you have to always double check what the current cycle's uh, requirements are. So on this note of redundancy, um, Dean's List is a really common one. For sure, mention your Dean's List because that's a proud accomplishment. Um, but you may find it could be a little bit much to keep uh, you know, putting in Dean's List, Dean's List, Dean's List for every year that you qualify. So you may just decide, okay, I'll do one entry of Dean's List. You put in the range of years and you just say you were awarded it every year. Um, and then the flip side of what I talked about before is that you could have several roles in an organization, 
but because the responsibilities are just too similar, you might just put it under one entry then. Um, and then just state, you know, what years you held certain roles in the description. So that's part one. Um, just because it was kind of like a, a quick overview of what the ABS is and what to expect and some basic tips. We'll go into a little bit more detail in terms of some specific things to try to include in your ABS in the next video. So with that, you know, be sure to follow Community of Support and we'll see you next time.